Hello, peeps. How's it going? It's getting cold around here. We had snow yesterday. Didn't stick around, but we had snow yesterday. Oh, yeah, my hair's growing out. It gets cold up around here. You want to see bear head? Wait till the wait till the weather gets warm again. It'll be back. But you can see how thin this is getting, which is part of why I shave it off at some point. It's harder to tell if it's being thin. Now, the other day. I was supposed to be going into the hospital for a arteriogram, you know, where they run that thing down the artery, and it was supposed to be in my right leg since that was the one that was giving me all the problem with trying to get that the foot healed and then it healed up anyhow now part of having a arteriogram done is that once they're finished you have to lay there perfectly still for bloody ever which I was not terribly worried about. But I was going to see if it was possible to do my makeup while laying perfectly still in a hospital bed. I'm still not sure they would have let me try, but yeah, you know, your girl's got to push an envelope once in a while. It's just that way. I'm resorting some stuff. I took mostly powders with me when I went in. Drop a big thing of a cream product and just make a mess. Or at least no more of a mess than I usually make. I mean, it's just rude. Anyway, I decided that I wouldn't even bother to get started until I knew for sure what we were doing. Because as it turns out, once the uh, surgeon came in and had a look at my foot, he said, um, Where's the open infection that we're supposed to be trying to fix? And I said, oh, that, that healed up right after we had the toe worked on. He said, you're kidding, right? And I said, no. And he said, then who? And I said, the wound care people, before they put me in the hospital, And I got pumped full of all kinds of IVs. And he's going, so did anybody look at this before they sent you here for, for this procedure? I mean, you know, recently? And I said, well, at the time that I saw your clinical practitioner, 
I was still bandaged up from, you know, here to hell and back. And since the ultrasound showed that I had some issues, they went ahead and scheduled this. and decided that they would make sure that if it still needed help, we'd be all set. And he said, well, you actually do need stents in two of your arteries, but the third one is just fine. It's working great. This foot has healed. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts when I wipe my nose. Um, he said, now we could go ahead and do this and put those stents in the other arteries, but at this point, it's not emergent. With it being not emergent, I don't see any reason why we should put you through what is a really heavy um, procedure until it comes to the point where you actually really do need this done because right now you are doing just fine and it would not be a big deal to let this go for a while because you're doing just fine. You don't have an urgent need for me to cut your leg open and run this thing down there and put stents in that you don't need yet. Now, if something happens again and you have another foot infection, let me guarantee you, I will be doing this. And I said, yes, sir. He said, however, unless you want to argue about me doing this right now, you're going home. I said, thank you, sir. And the nurses came in and DIV'd me and gave me back my clothes and said the the exit is this way and <laughs> home I went. Luckily the person who drove me, because my husband can't drive since his since his stroke and most of you have probably heard that one for a while now. If anybody's new, there you go. And I got myself home and got myself a really nice lunch because, you know, surgery, NPO, all that foolishness. And I was right pleased with the way this turned out. <laughs> I could do without having surgery. Another one this soon and to know that right now I'm doing just fine because I have one of the three arteries in the leg that is doing fine. The other two could use stents but they're not completely closed. And I'm going I'm good with this.
So I've gotten out most of the stuff that I took with me, along with a few other pieces. And I've added some creams and stuff back because I was going to do creams on the eyes. I was going to do powders on the face since that's the bigger yip 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 to me. I had creams to go on the eyes. So I've got, I've kept those out. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. See what kind of mess I could have made of myself laying there in the bed. Yes, I even took my little brow thing. I didn't want to take the long pencil. I've used the long pencil today first, but I didn't want to take the long pencil because I only had two small um, makeup kits, one mainly for brushes and the others, you know, that kind of thing. So let us see where we end up with this. I had taken the this particular no budge eyeshadow with me. I was going to use that as the um, eye setting. Because they yell at you that you're not allowed to wear any makeup or deodorant or moisturizer or anything on your way in. And I'm going, well, shoot. <laughs> That's an unhappy thought. So... Since surgery was supposed to be at 6.30 in the morning, I got up about 3, I took my shower, made sure I forgot to put all of my skin care on and all of that. It felt really weird having to force myself to forget it. <laughs> Because, you know, it's become a really big routine. Not so much in quantity of materials used, but it's, it's part of my daily routine, which, you know, it's like wash the face, do the face stuff. Oh, this is the Ace Bute. If they ever go anywhere or stop making this, I'm going to cry. This is beyond right or die. That's a holy grail. It's like, you know, get up, wash your face, do all the face stuff. Go in, back into the bedroom, be a diabetic, do all the meter readings and that kind of stuff, take my morning first breakfast, which is what I call the pile of pills, um, and then see where I think I'm going to end up from there. You know, put some clothes on, spray the pits. I just, I put a night, a long nightgown on and put my coat on. And the friend of mine that was coming to drive me didn't care. And it's like, I get there, there's no underpinnings on except a pair of panties and I, I was ready in seconds to get in the gown. Poof! I was all set. And 
then we start having all of this stuff that was going on about what we were doing and when we were doing it and how we were doing it and I'm like oh my this is going to be an interesting day This is one of the elf eye pencils. I've ended up with a bunch of them. This one's called Magnetic Pull. And I figured I'd start with this in the crease just for the heck of it. See, I figured with the cream sticks for the eyeshadows, it wouldn't be a problem to lay still from the rib cage down after the procedure. And I'm going, yeah, this will work. I won't have to go home looking like, you know, 10 miles of bad road. So, I'm sitting there with all my stuff, and they're telling me I don't need to be there. And I'm going, well, I'll go home and do it at home. Never got around to it. I ended up going back to bed because I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And went to go do this stuff and we didn't do this stuff so you know I had me a nice bit of food because I was starving had my coffee because I needed it <laughs> it's like if you're going in for labs they count black coffee as still fasting If you're going in for surgery, they count everything beyond the sip of water you use to take your meds and your meds as a no-go. Jump cuts, lots of jump cuts. And then... one is ice cream. It says it's ice cream. Now I'm going, really? Doesn't look very ice creamy to me. However, it is a bit lighter than the magnetic pole so I can play with it. Or run it up under my eye too while I'm at it. Now if I get brave I may try to put on my little brown lashes that I picked up. I'm not sure if I'm that brave. Because me and lashes still don't get along that well. And I've had them on once. The problem is, once you get the rest of the eye makeup on, because of the way my eyes droop, I almost have to do this to be able to get them on. So that all that extra skin is not flopping down on the top of the eyelids. Let's see. What's going 
next. I'll put a little purple in there just for the heck of it. This one's just called lavender. <laughs> This is a wet and wild as opposed to the elf ones I started with. Just because I have it, I'm going to use it. Now, I may pick something out of the drawer to darken up the outside corner a little bit. But, kind of like the way the lavender's looking. Put some of that lavender down there with the ice cream that's already there. Let's see, which one's this? I got two browns. I think they're the same shade. <coughs> I think one came, came in a Nipsey and one came in a set. The ice cream set. loads of fun. Battery on my poor little mouse died just now. And it decided it was going to mess up my entire day. Brat. I haven't done anything except daub some of the dark brown out here in the corner a little bit. Just to give it a little darkening point. <clears throat> What's going to be fun is when I go and pull this now two piece video off of the laptop and put it on the bigger computer because the bigger computer is the one that can handle the edit program that I use. I'm using DaVinci Resolve and yeah it's a little on the complicated side when you first especially when you first look at the instruction stuff because DaVinci Resolve is apparently one of the better professional uh, programs. They use it on a lot of films. But 
but they have a free variant that the rest of us can use and I really like it. It's like you could do just about anything you could think of that you might want to do whether it's necessarily a good thing or not. You know, you could apply all kinds of filters and all that stuff, and I'm going, nope, that's not my shtick. But then you go into the um, area of the program where they've got all kinds of rather intense stuff that you can play with and you can do things like correct your color level. You can play with your zoom. You don't have to reach over and try and fiddle with the zoom on the camera or if you've got a camera that doesn't have a zoom you got it covered because you can just zoom right on in from the editing program and it makes things a lot simpler for that kind of stuff. Now, this is some really nifty stuff that I picked up through one of my favorite cheap seats. Shop Miss A, AOA Studio. Loves it. Loves it locks. loves it lots and lots. I'm using this one because I started with the lavender back here and this one has a lavender shift. In the tube, the whole thing looks white. No, this is not nearly as bright and sparkly as I am often want to do. However, I was going to be trying to do this in the hospital. I'm not sure that that would have been the best place to try and do this bright and sparkly and shedding from off of sparkly eyeshadows that like to uh, do a little fallout. Now this is the Elf Halo Glow Beauty Wand that everybody had a cow about when it first came out because they're going, that's Charlotte Tilbury's design and I'm going, I don't care, I can't afford Charlotte Tilbury. And it's like some of the knockoff stuff I look at and go, I'm getting it because, yeah, I like the look. I like the colors. 
but I don't like the price. So I get some knockoff stuff. I get some inexpensive stuff. I'll get, you know, things like Alter Ego, and I'd get C Color if they were still around. I've actually got quite a bit of C Color. I get Profusion. I do a lot of stuff on Shop Miss A. They seem to have improved the shop, the AOA Studio singles, because I know a lot of us have biatched about. The singles, the colors are beautiful, but they're pressed so hard you can't get them out of the pan. And the singles I just picked up from them, because they were all on a dollar knockoff, I picked them up and figured if all else fails, I'll pop them all out of the pans and repress them. And go from there. And yes, I have some of the elf camo blushes. And yes, I still have a tendency to pull my blushes up and back away from the rest of my face just because I feel it looks a little better on me since the apples of my cheeks are down here now. It's like between being 66 and losing weight because of my diabetic medication, everything's kind of falling. I'm starting to get what some people call ozempic face. Because as you take the Ozempic and the weight starts to drop because of the way it works, which is why so many people are being silly and getting themselves Ozempic, that they're not being careful about getting And they don't always take care of themselves the way they're supposed to while they're on this stuff. Because it's not a joke. Now, some people... I know that are getting it, are getting it through credi credible verified sources and are keeping up with doctor's visits and all manner of stuff like that so that they don't get in trouble. I mean, you really don't want to be in trouble with this stuff. You really just don't. One of the things it does is slows down your digestion. You have to remember, have to remember to drink water. Lots and lots of water. Water. <clears throat> and 
You sometimes forget to drink water because of the behavior of the medication. You're not always thinking about, am I hungry or am I thirsty? Because you really don't feel it that way on this stuff. And if you don't keep your water up, you're going to get dehydrated and you're going to have other issues that go along with dehydration. And it will not be fun. It just won't. <laughs> Some of the things that will happen are on the TMI list, so you want to know, go look it up. And you really just don't want to risk yourself with medication that you can't verify is the correct medication and not just some stuff that some clown stuck in a injectable and it's calling it Ozempic or Wycovia or whatever variant they're calling it. It's too dangerous to take that kind of a chance. Now, let's see. I didn't really take anything with me that I was going to use as an eyeliner in particular. I was just kind of like going to take one of the cream sticks and run a brush over it and, you know, brush and kind of draw a line. Don't need a lot. Just kind of run it next to the eyelashes a bit. Especially since I am imperfect on this anyhow. What I need is contacts. What they won't give me is contacts. My eyes are in that zone where if I want contacts, I have to train myself to focus on distance with one eye and the near stuff with the other eye because they're going to have to correct one for each. And I'm like, yeah, no. I'm thinking that sounds a little too much like too much trouble. Too much trouble. I mean, I will suffer for beauty to a point. And I believe that particular line has more than been reached in that case. It 
it's like I'm not going to sit here and give myself a headache trying to remember which I am supposed to be using until I get the eyes kind of used to it, trained to it, ready to do it. Yes, I'm going to use a little bit of a brown pencil because that little bit of brown brush line is just not cutting it. Do, do, do. Now, let's see what I'm going to put. What am I going to put? Here, let's try this one. This one is called Sand Dollar. I've got a slightly lighter one that's like most nearly white. It's called Marshmallow, but I don't really want to go that white, because if I did want to go that white, I'd have used the big one that I had pulled out to do the little dots in the corners here. Kind of a gold beige. Yes, I know. I'm not beige. However, a little bit of beige to make the other stuff stand out. Not so much. Not a problem. It's like I actually even have some beige clothes and they still fit so I'm not going to throw them away. I'll just cover them in, in jewelry. Oh, me and my nose. Alrighty. Not perfect lines. Not at all perfect lines. Ask me if I care. Okay. Elf. Lash it loud. In brown. Yes, I'm using a lot more brown on my brows and my eyelashes including the false lashes that I picked up because, let's be real, if you look really, really closely at my eyebrows and eyelashes when there's nothing on them, you can't see them. Because they're not black. At one point in my life as a child, when my hair decided it was going to start doing its color shifting I went from an absolutely white haired toe headed baby to pretty close to this it got a little bit of red in it and then it went to wheat blonde and then it went to what the Victorians call light mouse. That was about the time I hit the end of my 20s. By the time 
I was midway through my 30s. It was what the Victorians call dark mouse. It started getting darker. And then it started getting lighter again because the white started coming in. It's like, yeah. It's not enough of the white yet to just let it roll, but that's okay too. Okay. I'm happy. It's not sticky. It has pretty much set down. Did it again though. I forgot to do the spritz before I put the mascara on. I hate when the mascara starts dropping little dots when I close my eyes for the spray. It's really annoying. Let's see. Yeah, still looking a little dampish here, but I don't see I don't see any mascara dots. I've never tried the freckle thing. And I don't know why. I mean, my, most of me is covered with freckles. I've got freckles and I've got moles, but I'm, I'm freckly, except on my face. I don't know why. Don't care. Doesn't matter. Nah, I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to put the eyelashes on. little brown on upper waterline. Make them stand out a little more. Same brown that I put on top. Alrighty. Now, let's see. I got this gorgeous color of Pixie Lip Glow that Leanne sent me. And I love it. It's, it's my bright kind of bright. Now I just got to see if I can find a lip pencil that I think is going to work with it. I think this one might. It's an AOA pencil and it's called Insta. And it's kind of a little bit of a peachy orange. 
but I think it's going to be close enough to the pixie Now I have to be careful with these, with this pixie. It's one of those that goes ratchet, ratchet, ratchet when you run it up. And that means it's not going to roll back down, so don't ratchet too much. You know, just get it clear of the top so you can use it. my best but I think I would have looked pretty good coming out of the hospital like this what do you think it's like I wouldn't have had any jewelry on either except for these because these little plugs are silicone so they could stay I had to take all the metal off Metal, metal, metal. All the metal had to come off. No rings, no earrings, no necklace. It's like I felt naked. Not only did I not have my makeup, I didn't have any of my jewelry and I'm going. I'm just not feeling this, you know? So. Yes, it looks dewy, but then again, it's all creams. So, and I kind of expect them to look dewy. Now, I used the camo concealer to take care of the, to help try and take care of the nasty blue veins under my eyes I used the AOA cream stick in porcelain anyway this is what we got this is what you get behave yourself no pale money not hair I actually saw something on one of the little things that comes up as a reel or something that said, God, give me the wisdom. Because if you give me the strength, you're going to have to kick in bail money. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Keep your hopes up. Bye.